Okay, we got average value. This would be part three of what we're doing in 4.3. Okay, we want to try to discover this formula for what we have. Well, we look at this area. This is from A to B under f of x. And so we know that we can represent that with this definite integral right here. So that would be that red area that's under the curve. Now when we talk about average value, the average value of a function, if I take all of these points that are along this curve and I added them all up and divided by how many you have, that would give me my average value. We have a problem. How many points are along this curve? Well, obviously there's an infinite amount, and so I can't do that normal averaging situation. So what we do instead is that we can take, and I call these the goalposts, and with those goalposts we can maybe take a little bar that goes across here, and then I'm going to bring this bar down. And I'm going to bring it down in such a way as that it takes this red region here and turns it into a rectangle. It's like this, is, this red area is a tub of goo. And I can smush it down into a region such that that area of that rectangle will equal the area of this definite integral. So I hope you, hopefully you can see this. It's better if I have uh, it live. But I'm going to take this bar right here. And this bar will be taking this piece out and moving it over to here. So I smash that region down until I had a rectangle. So I want to say then that this definite integral is also equal to, well, what are the dimensions of this rectangle? This would be b minus a. This height right here is what we would call f of, not necessarily f of, but it's f average. This height right here is what we're going to call the average of, instead of taking all those points along that curve and adding them up, dividing by how many we have, this y value is our average value. So when I multiply this out, this is going to be f average times b minus a. This would be the rectangle. Ooh, I can't spell. That would be the rectangle. This would be just the area under the curve. So what do we want to solve for? Well, we want to solve for this f average. So when I do that, I'm going to get f average. And I'm just going to divide both sides by this b minus a. So f average is going to be 1 over b minus a times the definite integral a to b of f of x dx. That's where we're getting our average value from. Now I got some uh, problems with my download here. But this is the average value. And it's on the closed interval from a to b. And then most often we see it like this. And f of x must be continuous. Ooh, that happens a lot to us. So let's try example number 24. When I have my function, and on the interval, I want to find the average value. So this is just going to be 1 over 2 minus 0 times the definite integral from 0 to 2 of x cubed minus x. Remember, cover this up, times dx. That's the setup. And then we can go ahead and solve that. Or I should say evaluate this. So this is going to be 1 half. Plug in the 2, and I'm going to get 16 over 4, which is 4. And then I'm going to subtract off plugging the 2, 4 over 2, which would be 2, and then I'm going to get minus 0 by plugging in the lower limit, and so 1 half of 2 would be 1. That's the average value. So in picture form, I've just colored in what the values of my integral are, but remember that this area right here is sine negative, this area right here is sine positive, but then if I take my bar, which is my f average, and push it over here, the question is, is does this area right here 
fit into this area right here. And you have to compensate for that negative as well. But I would say yes. So that would be my average value right here at 1. So now the average value of a function, there is an existence theorem which talks about f of c, if we want to find that value of c. So I want to know this point right here it gives me this value c. So I have an intersection of the curve and my f average value. Well, my f average value is 1, and I want to find out where that intersects with the curve. That will tell me my value of c. So you can go to your calculator and solve this, and you should get x is equal to 1.325. And so that's how you can solve that value. All right, I hope this is good for you. Average value of a function. We also dealt with uh, uh, rate graph and then the fundamental theorem of calculus number two. They're really, we don't really call it one and, well, we call it one and two, but it's just two fundamental theorems of calculus. Thanks. Have a great day.